prepared. Be ready. Are we? As servants of the Lord, are we ready? Are we prepared? It's an analogy that might help us to open this a bit wider. Middle school class. Think of, think of yourself back when you were in eighth grade. Well, for a few forward to when you were in eighth grade. But most of us, back to eighth grade. Eighth grade history class. Teacher's got to leave the room for a moment and uh, says, read this and answer these questions. Now, what are you going to do? Eighth grade classroom, teacher's going out the door. What are you going to do? Are you going to, A, be that dutiful student who is reading and answering the questions, ready for that teacher's return, ready to carry on the discussion? Mm, maybe not. Are you one that's going to think, oh, time for a nap. It's been a long day already. Got a busy evening. Let's just take a nap. Homework, we can do that later. Take a nap. But don't be napping now while I'm preaching, though. And the number three is, uh, C is, um, you know, it's time to goof off. It's time to screw around. Who can I poke? I can go stand and talk to this person. I need to talk to that person. You know how the Packers played this past Thursday night? We need to discuss that. You know, homework? Ah, forget about it. Who cares? We don't need, to, you know, there, there'll be, yeah, you know, we got all this other stuff to talk about and do. So which one are you? Dutiful student? Napper? Or um, other stuff? If we're honest with ourselves, there's perhaps a bit of all three of those in us at different times. But I want to challenge us today, not to the eighth grade classroom, but to the classroom of life. And in this classroom of life, are we prepared? Are we ready for the returning of Christ? If he came today, how would he find us? Dutifully studied and readied? Would he find us napping? Would he find us paying no attention? Not even prepared or ready? And so we want to challenge us to be looking in our lives at this closer, this classroom of life. I want to lay out three areas to challenge you in. The first one is to live by faith, especially our first two readings as we talk about living by faith is knowing our faith. First couple of readings talked about the faith of Abraham and Sarah and the promise and of their son Isaac. In their elderly age, Abraham and Sarah, to conceive and bring forth a child. Talked a bit about the the Israel in slavery and rescued from that slavery and the Egyptians, the destruction of the Egyptians and of that sense of our history, that sense of our by faith we live, this is our faith. We study it, we pray it. We hear it each week here in our liturgy. We read our Bibles. By faith we come to realize how our ancestors lived their faith out in our life and what through them God calls us to live in our life. So we've got to be those students studying. We've got to be those students by faith, knowing what our faith is all about. So I think that's part of our classroom of life, that which we, in a way, do here every Sunday, and hopefully you do in many other ways in your life as well. The second one is to be active. To uh, not only to live by faith, but to be active in our faith. In our readings, it talked about uh, as it talked about the Israel and the freedom from Egypt, talked about remember to keep holy the Sabbath, to live the Sabbath in the life, to keep the Passover in, in life, and, and recognizing a sense in that of calling us to be active. We need to be active as we come and, and gather each week for liturgy. Part of that action is, is, is the action of being here and of praying and of responding and, and of knowing our life. So it's not only just to learn about it, but it's to put it into action, to put it into, into life um, a, as we gather together. And it's not only here at Mass, but it's also how do we live this action out um, throughout the week? How do we live this action as we volunteer? Uh, as we've just come, fin just finished pe uh, picnic weekend, I'm just amazed at our, our chairpersons and the many, many volunteers a part of the picnic all the people that are actively involved in helping to put on this event, to, just to be a part of it. So we recognize again that it's by faith and by, it's by action of that faith that we live in, in our lives being prepared, being ready for Christ. And the third area I want to challenge you to is to be invested. Are you invested? And I'm not just talking about talking to your broker to see where your money's at but looking at the bigger picture of investment. Not just where our money is at, but where's our time spent? Where do we party? 
where do we, what do we do when we gather? How, do, how have we invested our lives? A reading says, where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Where is your heart, and not just your heart, but your mind invested in life? Is it invested in the faith and belief of Jesus Christ and living it out? Or is it just invested on secular other things in life? That investment of life. And that investment brings me, as I've reflected on this over the years, in my last assignment um, in Oshkosh, I was also sacramental minister for Winnicani and Amaral. And the pastoral leader out there, much like Sister Marlita is in Newton, was Sister Pam Beal. Sister Pam Beal was a part of this community years ago. She was a teacher in the school and then campus minister in the school. And Sister Pam Beal, in, in leading of the parishes and working with it, every year when the parish picnics came up, there was always this little bit of competition between the priest and sister. And I would shake my head and wonder, why are we doing this? Or there'd be other times in life it's like, why are we doing this? And Sister Pam's uh, reason for that is, all for Jesus, Father. All for Jesus. So in those moments when it was like, yeah, why are we doing this? All for Jesus, Father, all for Jesus. Can, and, and thus we carry through on, on many different things. But can we see in our life, our action, our in, how we have our invested, where we are and how we are invested in life? Is it all for Jesus or is it something that takes us further and, and turns us away from our Lord? So it's, it's recognizing that challenge of investment. Example of that is our parish picnic. You know, it's about food, it's about drinks, it's about fun, and it's all for Jesus. To gather people together as a community, to share in that community time of visiting and meeting new people. It's about having an opportunity to serve one another. Last night it was an opportunity at 4 o'clock to come together. We had an outdoor mass here to come together and, and to pray, to invest ourselves and to grow more and more in community. And also a way, part of our fundraising event for the year also, to help us raise the funds for our ministry here in the parish. Again, it's about the investment in our parish, in the investment in Jesus Christ. Father, all for Jesus, all for Jesus. So as we bring this sense of the classroom of life together that we're a part of, as we've moved, most of us have moved well beyond the eighth grade, but recognize those habits that perhaps were there. I want to challenge those habits in our life today and ask ourselves where maybe we need to grow in our faith and belief in Christ. So again, as we look at the classroom of life, we ask ourselves, are we living by faith? Are we continuing to study and grow in our faith? By faith, we are saved. By action, by putting that faith into action, we are saved by investing our heart and our mind, by recognizing that where our treasure is, there also is our heart and our head, by that investment in Jesus Christ, all for Jesus, that we recognize that as stewards of the kingdom of God, we pray to find ourselves ready for the returning of Christ, today, tomorrow, or in a few thousand years from now but that we may be found ready. So take a moment, ponder in your life, in this classroom of life, what do I need to work on this week to really be ready for the coming of